Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'm sit standing here and I'm looking around the crowd. I, I think this is the most balanced group I've seen so far at any of the sessions. But uh, really what I'm looking at is the future of uh, the mutual and credit union is, uh, industry into the future. So uh, thanks for all coming. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. And uh, most people should be down the beach and enjoying themselves. But thanks for coming for this particular session. What I'd like to do um, this afternoon, though, is just talk a little bit about what's happening in Australia and what's happening at my credit union, which is Teachers Mutual uh, Bank. And I think half the people in this room are from Teachers Mutual Bank <laughs> this afternoon. Uh, you can put up your hand and uh, you get an idea. And we have a lot of directors uh, there as well. So if I make a mistake, I'm sure the HR department's going to correct me on the way through. Uh, but look, Australia's made significant growth, uh, uh, really, uh, uh, towards gender equality over the recent years. Um, the problem is, as we go forward, that uh, there still is, on average, women do get paid less, unfortunately, in Australia. Um, they're less likely to advance. And really, um, over their career, they'll have less savings than uh, men. And we should turn this around. We should change this. On the other side, men of the coin, men themselves, find it more difficult to access flexible working hours. In some areas, they're discriminated against um, about wor uh, flexible working hours. So we've got a little bit to do there. In Australia, though, we have an organisation called the Australian Workplace Gender Equality Agency. It's a government agency. And really, it's driving the gender equality in the workplace across the country. Some of the things they do is uh, they educate. They have a, a good education agenda. They influence uh, building organisation capability. And really, they're shifting uh, workplace cultures uh, into the future. Uh, and really maximising, uh, I guess, the male and female um, talent we have in Australia. In 2012, the census of women in leadership, um, this was carried out by the agency, found that despite an acceleration in programs for women on the boards of Australian stock exchange, that's the, the top 200 companies in the Australian stock exchange and the top 500 companies, there was little progress for females um, in executive ranks. And uh, we've just heard a little bit about that before from Susan. Um, and really, in the top 200 uh, companies, there's less than 10% are women in those particular uh, companies as executives. Um, we're, we're a bit stronger in directorships in Australia. About 12.3% of those top companies have women directors. So uh, the women directors in those companies have got to start to make some changes and, <laughs> and develop some women uh, executives as well within those organisations. Um, but progress continues to be made. Uh, this year, the agency will generate valuable data from companies that report to it. So companies report things like workplace composition, pays, flexible working hours, all those things to the agency. And they're going to report back. And uh, they're going to put it in a form of a confidential document back to those organisations, customised and benchmarked against their peers. And from this benchmark report, it'll probably be unique in Australia. We haven't had anything like this before. It will be a powerful business intelligence tool, really enabling employers to compare uh, their gender performance against their peers, identify areas of improvement, and track the effectiveness of their gender equality strategies that they have within those organisations. Um, We've mentioned research here before, but research by a range of organisations show that organisations that respect and value diversity, brought on by both women and men, are better able to attract and retain high performance uh, and improve operational performance. And, uh, and that's uh, been known worldwide. And uh, it's something that we really have to strive for. But again, it's not about having token women in positions. It's really about diversity. That's the fundamental uh, importance. Uh, gender equality is paramount. And really, gender equality is achieved when people are able to 
access and enjoy the same rewards, resources and opportunity, regardless of whether they're male or female in that sort of area. So what is uh, TMB uh, doing? Uh, there's a nice slide there. It teaches Mutual Bank our commitment to the development of women has resulted in us receiving the employer of choice for women uh, citation from the agency for the past six years. So we've been on this journey for quite a period of time. This citation recognises our leading initiatives of ensuring pay equity for uh, women, having a, a zero tolerance for sexual harassment in the workplace, uh, providing work-life balance opportunities, and having a robust training and development framework that really provides for women in career development within uh, Teachers Mutual Bank. The public recognition has resulted in us being able to attract and retain high quality female leaders and uh, talent, and a lot are in this room <laughs> this afternoon. In society in general, there's an expectation that the workforce is representative of the wider community. And you take our organisation, Teachers Mutual Bank, we've got 161,000 members spread all out over Australia. It's a bigger country as uh, Brazil in size. I think it's the uh, fourth or fifth largest country in the world. And 59% of our membership is women. 41% of our membership is male. So that uh, we really need, and, and that really represents what the gender balance is in teaching. Um, in our own workforce, 75% of our workforce at Teachers Mutual Bank, I'll call it TMB, make it uh, easier, is women and 25% is male. Um, in management, women make up 30% of TMB's management team and 28% of our executive team. Um, again, that puts us ahead of the Australian Stock Exchange top companies, but uh, probably not as good a, as we'd like. Uh, but we're really proud of that. And if you measure Teachers Mutual Bank against the top companies in Australia on the Stock Exchange, we're doing okay. But we still have a lot of work to do in that particular area. Uh, TMB itself has a culture of generally supporting, of generally supporting uh, uh, women, and this flows down from the board. Uh, our board is probably one of our success stories. Uh, four out of our nine directors are women, so that's 44% representation for women on our particular board. And again, um, we have been an employer of choice partner with Women and Leadership Australia for the past three years. And uh, the partnership supports the commitment to developing women to move into leadership roles. And again, it's mainly around by providing networking opportunities for them. Uh, I was talking to one of our staff last night, uh, Nasana, who's sitting in the, in the audience, and, and that networking allows them to mix with other women who want to have careers, they have families, they have uh, challenges and difficulties, but uh, by coming together in these networkings, they're mixing with people that want to be leadership in our uh, mutual movement into the future. So. Uh, uh, very important, and uh, I learned a lot last night just listening to SNES and talking about that. Um, for this reason, um, really, we also are actively support the Women in Mutuals networking group here in Australia. And over the years, so this has developed into various things that we've been able to put on for our staff, our women staff within the organisation. We found that a lot of training courses and a lot of development courses either at TAFE or, you know, that's a tertiary institution or for a university, it was difficult for women with families to attend. So we brought, brought those courses in-house so that we could run them within the, uh, the mutual itself, the mutual bank, and, and then uh, women could actually participate in those particular courses. What that led to is, um, you know, uh, more empowered women and, of course, they also had equal opportunities when it came for roles and job opportunities and careers within Teachers Mutual Bank. So that's one of the initiatives that came out of those networkings. Uh, for over 25 years now, we've offered flexible working hours and uh, our HR, head of HR, Helen, is uh, passionate about that. We allow people to work from home 
Uh, we allow people to have flexible hours. We allow people to work part-time. Uh, we, we give all the opportunities, opportunities we can to keep the women within the workplace. So it's not saying, here's a couple of years, take it off and then come back. We want them to participate. Technology changes so quickly these days that uh, people have to keep up with it. So we have a lot of initiatives in that area uh, for women within the organisation. Um, also, uh, it was mentioned the McKinsey research found that companies with more women at the top achieve better financial results than those with less women at the top. And we found that within our organisation. And if you've got more than three or four women in senior roles within your uh, organisation, it's a healthier organisation. I know the figures prove that uh, the return on equity is about 50% higher where you have a lot of women uh, within those management roles. Uh, McKinsey also found that the gender diversity in leadership provides organisations with different per perspectives. Uh, I work with a lot of women every day and I know that uh, women have different decision making uh, capabilities. Men to be, tend to be individual and, and, and make a, a decision where women are more collaborative and you need both within your organisation if your organisation's going to grow within the future. Uh, at TMB we recognise uh, that we still have more to do. Uh, when you look at those stats, 30% of our management team are female, 28% are in the executive. But really, we have to probably start to set some targets, and uh, we've been talking about this for some time. Uh, it's good to see even Westpac, one of our big competitors out there, one of the big listed banks came out, and they've set a target of 50% for women over the next few years. So uh, we should be looking about the same level, particularly as we've got 75% of our employees are women within the organisation. Um, one area we have been successful in recently though is IT has always been seen as being pretty well male dominated and uh, in most US companies and around the world there's only about 25% women in the IT area of your organisation and uh, what we've been able to do is increase that up to 34% at Teachers Mutual Bank and put a number of women into leading management positions within our IT department. So we're pretty proud of that because it has been a, a male dominated area uh, for a long time. Um, the other um, misconception that comes up is that as you move up the ranks um, and you move up the ladder, there's this misconception that you have less flexibility, you know, you're on call more, it could be difficult juggling that with uh, home life. In fact, that's a misconception because really, the, the more you move up the ladder, the more flexibility you seem to have. I can tell you, our executive team, they work their own hours, they come in, uh, they work from home, they do a whole range of things, which is probably not available for some of the women who are on the counters, you know, in, in that front line. Uh, so there is more flexibility as you do move up the ladder. On the, the other side of the coin, you, we, probably from a male perspective, is that uh, if, if we allow all these things and we do all these things um, within our organisation to promote women, we also have to think about males as well. And they'll have, uh, they need flexibility in their working relationships as well. So, you know, if they're home, their children. I know I've, I've got four children at home, so uh, I certainly know too that I have to carry my load at home as well as um, in the office. Um, it's interesting, we mentioned the McKinsey report before, uh, there was something like 1,400 managers uh, looked at uh, during this particular um, uh, study and one of the striking results was the finding of women want to become top leaders uh, but are less confident than men are being able to achieve this. And it's not being less confident about their individual abilities or their education or, or whatever, it's about the environment they're in, the environment within the financial organisations or the organisations that they feel less confident with. And, and that's up to 15% uh, between uh, females and males, the females feel uh, less confident. So we have to build the environments where women feel confident and want to strive for those top uh, leading positions. And I'll, I'll close now, but there's a couple of points that I think are probably important that I would like to get across and some initiatives. Um, workplace education for women and men on flexible options for balancing work and family responsibilities. 
communication programs to dispel the myths that work flexibility is not an option. If you move higher up the career ladder, it certainly is. There's a bit of a perception uh, that drive, uh, the women's uh, drive and ambition is more aggressive than males, and I can tell you it's not. And uh, certainly they are ambitious, but, but uh, we want ambitious people for the future. Um, mentoring and sponsorship programs for aspiring women into senior executives, both male and female, and really consulting with our female workforce as what they believe or perceive the barriers are. Now we do some of this um, in our annual research with women and uh, we've got, we ask are there any barriers for women to succeed at Teachers Mutual Bank? And so far we've got 93% saying there's not, they're, they're up, they don't see any barriers going forward. So, but we've got to keep this communication up with particular people and, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I welcome uh, the discussion today and thanks very much for listening to it.